Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we're going over part 5 of my mastering series with Isotope's Ozone 5 plugin. I'm using the advanced version, but if you're using the regular version, I'll go ahead and try to point out the differences as I go, as I recall them. Um, if you haven't seen part 1, 2, 3, or 4, go ahead and check the video description. I should have links in there so you can see the whole series. I'm going to go ahead and unbypass the stereo imaging module. It's selected as you can see with this green button here. I'll unbypass by clicking on the power button. I'm going to preview the track we have so far by pressing spacebar on my keyboard. You'll notice I had the low end band uh, soloed here in the crossover. I'll undo that and <laughs> preview again. So there we have it. Now with the stereo imaging module unbypassed, let's talk about some of the views. This top view or mini spectrum is the crossover view. You'll notice that this crossover view is the same view or similar view that you've seen in Dynamics and the Harmonic Exciter. And if we click on the graph, we can see why. Because by default, these multiband modules share a shared crossover. You'll notice in mine, currently, they're all broken apart from the, the shared crossover, meaning that you can adjust these bands independently while not affecting, for example, the dynamics module. You'll see it's zero, uh, 20 hertz to 121 hertz, and stereo imaging, it's 20 uh, hertz to 123 hertz. If they were in the shared crossover, by adjusting one of these bands, it would affect both. So you can break them apart or not, up to you in the graph here. Next, after looking at your crossover view, you're going to see your stereo width view. This is going to show you how wide you are per band. If I press spacebar, you'll be able to see. So as we make changes to the plugin, you'll notice the either a widening or a narrowing. Real quick, if we jump over here, this is where the work happens in the plugin. Band one, two, three, and four, either we can widen or narrow um, each band. By raising the meter from 0% uh, on up to up to 100%, we are going to increase to maximum widening. By bringing it down to negative 100%, we'll bring it down to maximum narrowing. Um, I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard or Option and then click to reset this back to its default setting. Real quick, if I bring these all down to minus 100, and I preview this by pressing spacebar. <laughs> We'll notice that this is a flat line because now we have a pure mono signal. I'm going to go ahead and press option, uh, click all of these to set them back to their default. I'll click down here. This is the correlation trace. As we play our track, what we're looking for is all the stuff in the green up here. You don't want it to dip below. This little red line that dipped below right here, you'll notice, is that little click. For some reason, when I record tutorials with my audio interface and I stop, there's a little delay of a, a final sound being played, and it's nothing that happens during recording um, of audio, or it's, it's just a strange thing. So don't worry about that. It's not the track. It probably won't even be happening for you. Uh, so that's the mini spectrum up here. We talked about the ability to control each band here, bands one through four, typically band one and band two, you're usually not going to touch. You're not going to widen them, that's for sure. Will you narrow them? Only if you're having problems in your track, and this may be one way to fix them. Um, by narrowing them, you could be losing uh, perceived volume in these bands, as well as squashing certain sounds, you know what I mean? So we're not going to do that. Usually you're going to be working in band three and four. You're going to be winding or exciting these bands to bring out uh, a little bit more width. Next, let's talk about this. This is your vector scope, your stereo balance meter, and your correlation meter. So your vector scope has three different views. List, which I think stands for listage, um, polar S, and polar L. These are all different ways to see the width of your mix and also whether it's in phase or the majority is in phase. Next, your correlation meter. This is the one right here with a white line here going up to plus one and down to minus one. Basically, all the energy in your track should be happening from this zero point up to the plus one point. Anything happening down here means your track is out of phase and you need to fix it. Um, 
below here in your left and right balance meters. This shows you where the power of the track is or the energy of the track. If it's mostly happening on the left or mostly happening on the right. We can simulate some of this in information if we're in the channel button here. We can invert the left channel or the right channel to throw things out of phase. Um, you'd only do this if you were having problems. Same with swapping your left and right channel. The mono button can be helpful. Basically this sums the left and right channels to mono um, by 50% making 100% channel. This will let you preview what your track may sound like on some internet radio stations which play their tracks in mono. So something good to check. If you have the advanced version of the plugin you have this stereoized button. When you enable this uh, stereoized feature you can adjust the delay. What this does is makes a widening effect that is mono compatible. So as we make changes to this plugin, sometimes when you widen something, you're going to throw things slightly out of phase and then when it's uh, converted to mono, you're gonna hear a significant decrease in uh, volume. By having the stereo stereo eyes uh, feature enabled, you're going to make something that's mono compatible. So if you have the advanced version, turn this on. As far as where the setting is concerned, 7 tends to be a good, which is the default tends to be a good starting point. Dragging this all the way up, even though it will significantly widen the track based on the settings that you have up here, um, isn't always a good idea. And then a low setting is not necessarily a good idea either because it doesn't have as much character in my opinion. So moving right along, if you do not have the advanced version of the plugin, then don't worry about that. Next. I'm gonna go ahead and throw things out of phase here uh, in the channel view just to give you an idea. But first, I'm going to switch, switch back over the crossover view and I'm gonna let you see what's happening within the vector scope, the correlation meter, and the left-right balance meter. Some of the things that you're looking for. In your vector scope, this basically should be higher than it is wider. If it is wider than it is higher, that means you're out of phase. Um, well, it's okay that things are happening outside of this middle center. Um, we want to see that. That shows that there is some width. Also, in your correlation meter we already talked about, you want to be uh, above this zero point line into the positive area. In your left and right channels, you want to see something that's happening. It can jump around, but the majority of it happening somewhere close to the center line. If we invert one of the channels, for example, if I click on this, I'm going to throw things out of phase. You're going to see all different things change. You're going to see the correlation meter has something down here. Now, obviously, you wouldn't be doing this, uh, but for purposes of showing you what you would see if you had a problem, I'm going to do this. So you notice here in your vector scope, we are wider than we are taller, meaning we're out of phase. You also notice that a lot of the energy is happening here by the minus one. That means we have a phasing problem. So I'm going to uncheck this box. Obviously, I didn't want to do that. If I check both these boxes, technically I'm inverting both channels. We'll still be in phase, so it might not sound off. And in fact, it's going to look on because technically we are in phase. So as far as the vector sc scope is concerned, our correlation meter is concerned, it is correct. But we are going to run into some nuances by inverting both the channels. It still will not sound right over extremely uh, powered systems. I'm going to uncheck those. Again, slop swapping left and right. These are things to fix problems. Along with the phase and the offset portion of uh, these tabs, these are all for adjusting or fixing problems. The only button that probably I use on a normal basis is the mono button, and that's just to preview what the track would sound like uh, in mono. So if I press spacebar. Notice it definitely um, it sounds wider when it's not in mono. Although this track itself is just a test track, it's not complete, and it's not a wide track to begin with. So, next let's quickly uh, talk about phase. This allows you to rotate the phase of your track up to 90 degrees, I believe, so 0 to 100, but this is roughly up to 90 degrees. By increasing this knob, you're going to widen your track, but usually you're going to use this if you're having problems. This is not to be used in place of these sliders over here. Your offset. Basically what this allows you to do, right now these bands are linked. This is band 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? 
What this allows you to do is separate the phase between your left and right channels. It adds a delay between them. So if we bring all of these up, for example, you're gonna notice it's gonna be louder in, I believe, your left side. Let me uncheck uh, the stereo eyes. And then if I bring this all, all the way down, you should hear it louder in the other speaker. Technically, the volume is the same, it's just a perceived difference because of this delay. I'm gonna option click in here to set it back to zero. You can unlink these bands and make changes here. If you are trying to fix something, it's not my expertise in using this portion of the plugin, but um, yeah, this is used for correcting uh, phasing issues. So let's switch back over to the channel view. Actually, it really doesn't matter because what we're going to be doing is adjusting these bands. For this particular track, I came up with 20% for band three and 80% for band four. What we can do also is solo these bands. So if we solo this band, I'm gonna bypass this 20% addition real quick. I'm gonna press space bar. And then at one point, I'm gonna uncheck bypass so you can hear the difference. That's pretty subtle. We're gonna hear it a little more in the high end. So I'm gonna solo this band, bypass uh, the change we made to 80% here. I'm also gonna click on stereo eyes. Unbypass. You'll also notice here in the vector scope, we're seeing some, uh, some large changes with uh, these changes that have happened. So if I switch over here to the vector scope of the Polar S view, what you're looking for here, you see this V here. This is kind of the same thing as the listage view with this X happening, it's just cut in half. So same thing, we want the majority of our action to be happening here. It's okay if things are happening over here and over here, however, the majority needs to be happening in the center. If not, we're having a phasing problem. Again, it should be higher than wider. Uh, otherwise we have a phasing issue. So again, I'm gonna solo this band real quick. I'm gonna bypass the change to 80% just so you can see what it looks like before and after. When I unbypass it, you should see a widening happening within this view. Unbypass. So even on my uh, cheap headphones that I'm listening to, I can hear a significant difference in width when I unbypassed it. I'm gonna unsolo this. I'm gonna let you see the Polar S view with all bands playing. You can see the majority of the stuff is happening right here, but we have a little scatter happening. That's the width of our image, and that's pretty good. I'll click on over to the Polar S view. This is the same thing as the Polar, uh, or Polar L view. It's the same thing as the S view, except it just draws within the vector scope slightly different, or different. While it's playing, if we ever wanna reset our view, all we have to do is click within here. So as it's playing, I'm gonna click, click a few times to reset the draw mode within the vector scope. So every time I click, it reset this view. So if this gets scattered and you're not sure what's going on at a certain point or you wanna reset it for a certain part of the song, just click, it will reset it, and it will redraw as information is entering the plugin. So guys, I hope you like this tutorial. I think the only thing I'm missing are the options. Let's right click, go to imager options. This enable ticker correlation meter, this is for this view over here. If you wanna see the correlation trace, if you unenable uh, un this by unchecking this box, that will get rid of the view here. This will show you how smooth the drawing is that's happening there. Prevent any phase, well you should definitely check this. This uh, tries to prevent uh, uh, mono compatibility issues when using the sliders. All of this is for the phase meter. If you wanna see different things as far as the correlation history, if you wanna enable the vector scope, which is happening over here behind the options window, this is just to show or hide things. The only other thing that you maybe wanna change is your vector scope detection method. If you're using the regular version of the plugin, use RMS. If you're using the advanced, use envelope. Again, the normal crossover are you using hybrid, analog, or digital. I use the hybrid module. If you wanna use the yet less than four bands, this is where you would change it. We can go ahead and cancel out of here. 
So guys, that's the stereo imaging module. Let's actually just briefly touch on the post equalizer. The post equalizer is after you've made all these changes, do you need to sweeten your track in a specific spot? It's the same as the, uh, the equalizer that we used earlier, but typically this equalizer is to flatten or maybe accentuate a couple points before it's going, being fed into the dynamics, etc, etc. Post equalization is for just a little bit sweetening, just a little bit tightening, etc. You don't necessarily have to use every single module of this plugin every time you master a track. Do you have to use the post equalizer every time? No. Do you have to use the reverb module? No. However, there are presets for all of the modules. If we click on this drop down arrow here, we can scroll through the presets, find something we like. Let's say we want something brighter and bassier. We can uh, click on that. Why is it not adding? Let's unbypass the plugin. There we go. Click on brighter and bassier. We'll notice that it added four bands, a high pass, and three other bands within the plugin. If you don't see the EQ bands, click on this plus button right here to show them. It's got a similar view of what was happening inside of uh, the, the other equalizer uh, version of the plugin. So again, you can work in mid side. You can adjust all your bands. You can make snapshots for matching, etc. Um, so yeah, whether you use this or not, up to you. We can hear what it sounds like right now. I'll go ahead and uh, spacebar to audition. And just a quick note to, to bypass the whole plugin and where we've gone and uh, come from and where we've gone to. On, uh, this is bypassed. So there we go, guys. In the next part, part six of this tutorial series, we're gonna be going over the maximizer and any final notes that I can talk about Isotopes Ozone 5. I hope you guys like this tutorial, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, guys, till next time, I'm out.